Hello, welcome to this e-learning session of Chikuris Chikura, the another intestinal nematodes. Session, our objectives of today's session are: we'll discuss general features of this form Chikuris Chikura, its morphology, its life cycle, which is very simple. Human is the only host. We'll see the disease produced by this form. its laboratory diagnosis how we can diagnose the disease of this form and finally in short prevention and control of this disease so if we see this form chikuris chikura uh, the name chikuris suggest hair like tail it is uh, derived from two greek word trichus that is hair and uris means tail though it's a misnomer because its tail is not thin like hair uh, it is reverse the tail is thick posterior part is thick and fleshy and its interior part is thin uh, the other name uh, which is common name of this worm is whip worm and it is very appropriate because it looks like whip we'll see that in uh, morphology section if we see distribution of this worm it is a uh, very common in tropics so indian subcontinent uh, africa south america these are the areas where we will find this worm burden significantly high compared to rest of the world the habitat of this worm you will find the adult worm found attached uh, with large intestine so cecum and appendix if we see morphology this adult worm the size is around 3 to 5 cm just like uh, ascaris lumbricoides that is round worm the female is uh, larger compared to male and uh, there is a characteristic morphology if uh, i'll show you just uh, how it looked like see this is uh, its interior end and this is the posterior end that is the tail so this posterior almost uh, which covers almost 40% of its body is thick and fleshy while anterior end is thin which is hair like that's why it is known as whip worm because this looks like the handle of the whip and this is like whip flesh so that is the morphology of adult worm if we see the morphology of egg uh it is a barrel shaped bile stem so it would take bile from the uh, stool and uh, it would uh, look yellowish brown in color and this two typical polar uh, mucus plug that is very unique to this and that makes it very easy to identify this one among all the intestinal nematodes so that is the morphology of this one if we see life cycle of this worm again it is very simple if you see that human being is the only host of this worm and human being get infection by ingestion of the infective worm which is embryonated egg of this worm by eating contaminated food or water when it is enter with food or water the larva would come out in small intestine from the egg and finally in large intestine it will it will convert itself into adult worm male and the female worms would be there and after fertilization of these worms there would be eggs would be excreted in the stool and that egg would wait for another host to infect again so it is basically peak oral transmission but uh, one thing uh, you must uh, think that it requires almost this much time to get mature and become again infective so this freshly passed egg does not uh, infect it, it is not infective and it does not infect anybody but it requires to mature itself and finally this egg which contains larva that is the infective form of this 
worm. So that should be taken care of. So basically, this is the infective form, and this one is the diagnostic form, and that would have the diagnosis of this disease. Now, if we see the pathogenesis and the clinical features, uh, things to be noted is most of the infections are asymptomatic, and there would be no uh, symptoms or if, if at all symptoms are there it would be very mild and will not lead to any diagnosis or the clinical diagnosis but if the person is having heavy infection the worm load is higher there would be symptoms due to two things one is the mechanical effect of the worm and other is the allergic response so Sometimes you will see that uh, it may produce anemia. Again, the point to be noted here is it would not feed on the blood like hookworm, which is ankylostoma duodenale, which sucks the blood from the intestine. It would not feed on the blood, but due to attachment of this worm to the mucosa of the intestine, there would be oozing of the blood and that heavy infection may lead to blood loss which is chronic in nature may lead to anemia and many times you would a uh, person would have diarrhea uh, which is mucus diarrhea in nature one of the very important thing uh, which would occur as a consequences of heavy infection especially in the children is the rectal prolapse though it is not very common feature but uh, this is the thing which is uniquely associated with this uh, disease that is rectal prolapse again it would not occur in the adult it would occur in the children where the entire rectum would come out and that is the uh, one of the feature which we need to remember in now we come to lab diagnosis how to diagnose this disease just like other intestinal worms Stool examination is the key. Uh, you can uh, examine, take the portion of the stool, and under microscope we can see the typical eggs of this worm, and it is very easily uh, you can identify this thing because it has a it has a bile stain. The color of the egg is yellowish brown, and this two polar mucus plug. This is uh, very unique to this worm and it is diagnostic so you can uh, identify this worm easily. Again this is a, a very unique thing which is associated with this worm is when a person do that sigmoidoscopy this would give coconut cake rectum appearance. Why it is coconut cake because the rectum is inflamed and to that inflamed rectum many worms would be attached the whitish worm would be attached on the rectum which gives typical appearance of coconut cake uh, eosinophilia is also one of the characteristic feature so it is not the diagnostic because many other parasitic diseases also have the eosinophilia but uh, it is an additional feature which you will see in the CBC examination that marked eosinophilia would be there in the heavy infection of this worm. Finally, the prevention and control. <coughs> so, uh, the treatment part like other intestinal nematodes, mebendazole and albendazole are the choice of drug which can control this infection and to break the chain of the infection sanitary disposal of feces use of toilet toilets can uh, remarkably cut down the cases of this worm because when person defecates in open area the stool would have access to our food and water and that cross contamination leads to transmission of this hygienic habits like uh, hand washing before meals before cook cooking the meals would also decrease the chances of transmission of this infection and health education of course that is the key to 
decrease the load of such intestinal worms so with this uh, today's session the things to be remembered here which is very unique to this worm is one is the morphology because its morphology is typical it looks like rib posterior part of this worm the tail part is thicker thick and fleshy and anterior part is very thin which gives it characteristic whip like structure and in egg its egg is having two polar mucus plugs so again the shape of egg is also unique and in pathogenicity the points to be remembered are uh, in heavy infection it may lead to anemia and the mucus area and the characteristic is rectal prolapse that is though it is not a very common feature but it is very uniquely associated with this worm that is rectal prolapse in the children so with this we uh, complete today's session thank you very much for watching this video uh, if you have any query you can write in the comment box it would be sorted out thank you